your back. Yes, let's get right to it. His companion leans forward, ready to... They're impressed that you dove right into the most advanced parts of the theory. Half an hour evaporates and the conversation is still wending its way toward new and unexpected places. A cool breeze coming off the bay wraps itself around the Capeside apartments in a nearly forgotten part of that glorified construction site, surrounded by rusted pieces of scaffolding and walls of faded tarpauling. A detective of the RCM debates the intricacies of an abstruse theory with a pair of university students. But if it's true that this individual possesses so much capital that light literally bends around him, then that must mean... In Innocence of Capital, Pancha and Wardman argue that communists must possess as little capital as possible in order to keep their thinking undiluted by its influence. You've accrued a modest account balance over the last few days, but probably not enough to warp your thinking too much. Again, he was just a regular high net worth individual. There was nothing extra physical about him. Now the breeze has subsided. All is still except for the last bits of steam rising from the coffee pot. Well, on that note, I think we're gonna call it an evening. No, wait. Can this really be the end? You feel like you've just gotten to the real stuff. Yes. One of our better discussions lately, on the whole. What do you mean, is that it? You've done the reading, we talked about it. What more do you expect from a reading group? Well, you could always ask, I guess. He probably won't get a better chance. Honestly. But it's getting late. So maybe pick the most important question. The question you mean to ask is both very complicated and incredibly simple. Take a deep breath. Best to go one piece at a time. The young man waits patiently for you to finish. Yes? The young man considers your words for a minute. You're witnessing his ironic armor melt before you. This is his true self you're seeing now. There's something going on in there, but his innermost sanctum is still beyond your reach. The theorists Puncher and Watman, not inframaterialists, but theorists nonetheless, say that communism is a secular version of Perikanasian theology that it replaces faith in the divine with faith in humanity's future. I have to say, I've never entirely understood what they mean, but I think maybe the answer is in there, somewhere. Only in this very specific sense. Communism doesn't dangle any promises of eternal bliss or reward. The only promise it offers is that the future can be better than the past, if we're willing to work and fight and die for it. Nobody said fulfilling the proletariat's historic role would be easy. It demands great faith with no promise of tangible reward. But that doesn't mean we can simply give up. Even then, Mazov says it's the arrogance of capital that will be its ultimate undoing. It does not believe it can fail, which is why it must fail. Their faces blurred, yet frozen as though in ambrotype. You were never that young, were you? I guess you could say we believe it because it's impossible. It's our way of saying we refuse to accept that the world has to remain. Like this. Yes, that's a good way to think of it. A work in progress. A thought can be a very powerful thing. That's the whole idea of inframaterialism. His words aren't really directed at you. He's wrestling with himself now. Devan, it's getting pretty late. You're right. We should clean this up and get going. 
Of course, the matchboxes. You'd very nearly forgotten to ask about them. Now may be your last chance. So you really did read all the way to the end? Yeah. Uli and I were trying to see whether there was enough plasm between the two of us to hold up a few matchboxes. Saying it out loud makes him realize how foolish it sounds. It was just a little informal experiment. No reason to take it too seriously. The young man looks at you a moment, then at his companion. What could it hurt? All right, let's give it another go. You know what? I'll sit this one out. I don't think you want my skeptical materialism interfering. Before long, a modest tower begins to rise from the pile of matchboxes. You place every box with the utmost delicacy and precision. Easy, Uli. It's holding. It's holding. The higher the tower goes, the quieter the room seems to become. Aside from the occasional comment, the three of you are completely absorbed by the task. All right, you go next, Stepan. The young man pushes back his shirt sleeves, revealing the pale flesh of his forearms. Is it? It's holding. It's holding. Yes, this is the closest we've ever gotten. It's almost exactly as Nielsen's sketch imagined, a physical manifestation of the dialectical spiral of history. All right, gendarme, your turn. You've got this. Theories aside, they're only matchboxes. Even the lieutenant is watching intently now. It's... it's... My god, is he really holding? It is. It is. There, in the middle of the floor, the winding spire quivers with an improbable energy. This is impossible, right? There's no way it's really staying up like that. But it is. It is. For a long moment, no one says a word. Even the lieutenant is transfixed. A low-pressure system is gathering itself over the bay. It's begun to tug violently at the tarpaulings. And there it goes. No. It was exactly what's supposed to happen. We should treat it that way. We should probably clean up. Well, I think we're probably finished here, Detective. Wait a minute, if you don't mind. We wanted to get your opinion on something. A few little changes we've been thinking about. Nothing too major, I think. We were talking potentially about relaxing some parts of our admissions process. That's interesting. I saw people love group interviews. I thought so too, but perhaps we overdid it, just a little. There was another thing. We were also debating putting up some posters around town. Though some of us maintain that advertising is an unacceptably bourgeois tactic. That's what makes it so beautiful. The irony is unbeatable. <clears throat> As a noted art cop, you definitely have an opinion on this. That's exactly what I was thinking. Hmm. I guess no one could accuse Cindy of having a bourgeois aesthetic. Plus, I've got the perfect place in mind. Put some more coffee on, Uli. We've got a long night ahead of us. We should probably get Cindy in here too. Oh, and gendarme. One last thing. 
About that question you asked earlier, he reminded me of a certain poem that you might appreciate. Ah, so he has read something besides his books of abstruse theory. It was written by a young communard who was killed on the barricades during the coalition landings. The story goes that he wrote it on the last night of his life, keeping watch from the barricades in the middle of the night. I don't have the whole thing committed to memory, but there's a line in it I think about sometimes. In dark times, should the stars also go out? Anyway, good night to you. <laughs>